the transformation is complete, my friends. Rudy Land has become a hipster doofus, cynical asshole. All movies are the same, and I hate everything and everyone <laughs> that isn't French or German in origin. Today it was Ready Player One. I'm joined today by Silky Johnson, famed uh, player hater. So tell us, Silky, what do you think of Steven Spielberg's latest outing? Latest catastrophe. Oh, <laughs> oh One more thing. We were in an audience with many, I'm, I'm pretty sure, special needs people. <laughs> it, I may be being a dick or an asshole, but it seemed perfectly evident to me. Special education, mentally infirmed. <laughs> Whatever you want to call them, I'm not disparaging them. They just were in the theater with us, and I made note of it. Yeah, it was it was a family. Uh, oh, even better. It was his dad, his like three sons, and I was lucky. I came in the theater, and they were about to go to the row where we were. Yeah. And I just ran right over Post to the guardrail, and out. I was like, boom! I Game sat over, down. So they all sat back down. They literally brought in like a fucking two liter. <laughs> it exploded on the floor in front of them. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, before you were even there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty perceptive, guys. <laughs> Any FBI guys need a new hire? Yeah, so it was there, Rudy Land. <laughs> it was definitely an interesting theater experience with them. But that's not the point. The point yeah. is the film. We get down to the film. We talk about the lenses, yeah. the angles, the Dutch angles. <laughs> the Dutch angles. What did you think of the Dutch angles of this film? Uh, I actually really didn't notice, <laughs> notice them like you did. Uh, there was definitely a few of them, but... I did not notice any Dutch never, angles. Never really bothered me. No Dutch angles. How'd you feel about the movie? What'd you think? Uh, I thought it was enjoyable. Okay. I liked it. As... Okay. Please continue. I'm sorry I cut you off. Um, you know, it's... I... I knew things about the book that the entire book was pop culture references. So that definitely helped you. Then. Oh yeah, absolutely. I went in knowing that the whole entire movie is just going to be pop culture references. There was at least If, three separate alien references. Yeah, there's there's a lot. And um, if that's a problem for you, you're really going to need to avoid this movie. It was a problem for me. Yeah, you, you Think were fucking of something miserable fucking through the whole original. Thing. Fuck. If. Even if they do all the pop culture references, do something fresh with the story, with the movie. The story is the same epic Avengers fucking... Uh, I don't know about that. What's, uh, it's, it's what's another just epic I, movie? I... It's, just, it's the same line of big budget movies where it has to be epic. Well, that was the book. That's the book. I get it, but it's just I like mean, as it, a movie, it fucking doesn't work for me. I've seen it. Yeah, I mean, way listen, too you often. Can, you can make the argument that this book does not translate to the big screen. Um, I didn't read the book. No, it made a perfectly fine movie. The only problem was it made a perfectly fine big budget movie. Oh yeah, you needed a huge budget, and um, uh, you know, it, it the references just didn't bother me, and you it was know, one after no, it's the references, the whole. Steve Jobs, godlike fanboy. They, it was sort right, of right, but that's the, like I say, the, the the writer of the book. He's going he, for that, but yeah, at the same time, that. it's just it's like he's deifying a goddamn applications designer. Yeah, and that's something wrong in society as a whole. I see it as fucked up. Like, well, I mean, he wrote this book years and years ago. I think it was like maybe 2011. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's just um, it was a massive love letter to video games. And uh, as someone who you know, you know, I've fallen out of a lot of the AAA games industry. So you know, the the references to you know older games and. Just all the little nods. I, I enjoy it. I, There was I one that. section that I had so much hope for. I was so excited to see Yeah, it. I know. You kept doing the prayer well, wait. emoji. I wasn't trying to be like a dick. I was really <laughs> praying for something to happen. We'll wait, to, we'll wait to spill the beans on that. Because I'm betting a lot of people will like this. Because I bet a lot of people read the book. Yeah. I hate fanboy culture. Like, you can like something. Just because somebody made it, it doesn't make them a saint. It doesn't make oh, them a listen, good I mean, person. I uh, I had a problem with Steven Spielberg's last film. I'm definitely not an apologist for him. His last uh, film was The Post, The Post, right? yeah, which I hated. Did you see BFG? Yes, I did. And that was forgettable. It was okay. It's, you know, it's... Steven Spielberg, his list of, like, 
for me, his list of duds outweighs his list of great movies that are, you know, worth going back to for me. Yeah, I mean, you can say that. But I when mean, he hits, definitely when he hits, he really I mean, hits hard. You can't, saving Private Ryan, it's, it's unquestionable. It's Jurassic Park perfect. I was going to go with. No, I mean, I think Saving Private Ryan is his best I haven't movie. seen it in a while. I haven't it's seen um, so the Nazi one blue. with the... Uh, Schindler's List? I haven't seen Schindler's List in a while. Yeah, Did well, you know that um, like, yeah, well. he was supposed to be in Braveheart? He was supposed to be Braveheart? Liam Neeson? I think I feel like that would have been pretty interesting. Well, he probably did Rob Roy uh, because he didn't get that. That kind of makes sense. <clears throat> he did the remake of Rob Roy. But uh, back to Player yeah. One. The game, the cartoon stuff, when they're in the video game world, it was... You know, I've seen it a thousand times in an okay. animated movie. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I it thought didn't there blow was, me away. I thought there was set pieces and the the first race really set piece. Cool. Oh, it was it. interesting. It I was. I fucking loved it. It was. I liked it. That, it was okay. That scene was just so fucking cool to me. Yeah. Uh, I really liked and how they go back to See, it. See, it was cool, but then I sat back and I'm like, all right, it's an animation. There's no crazy, this or that. I mean, really that going that on. scene was better than than the entirety of fucking the godzilla most recent godzilla uh -huh. the you know the fucking king kong would you, Skull Islands. would you wait that that just one yeah. sequence is better than all of that shit and it lasts for what five minutes if Man. that it's better than fucking the last i hated four. the romance stuff i hated the romance stuff you didn't like the actors who in the romance it was so cheesy everything was so cheesy it everything it was either be, reference or cheesy but I mean, like, it's supposed to be kind of tongue-in-cheek Saturday morning cartoon. It's not supposed to be this, like, you know, serious, you know, ap you know, well, I don't say epic, Yeah, there's just, just, I... You can't... I'm getting, I don't know, I just, with the references and the samey sort of plot where everything's epic, it... That sort of wa washed away that I sort think, of... It's supposed to be like a well, Saturday morning cartoon. Because right. the villain, they beat you over oh, the head he's so, so hard. Over the top. That it's he's great. so bad. Not only that, they like... They go so over the top to show you he's the bad guy. Like... Yeah. It just... Uh, at the third or fourth time where he like kicks a puppy, I'm like... <laughs> Alright, come on. Can, I think we we got it, guys. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I liked that it was ballsy enough for him to do certain things in this movie. Yeah. Um, but he's he's a fucking weasel. He's a coward. Yeah. You know, it's all behind the scenes. He wants everybody else to do it for something. There's even a scene Another where... thing in this movie, they showed all gamers who are young, good. Oh. All gamers who were adult or older, bad. Well, what about the main guy who made it? He was a gamer. and He, he was a kid. Bad. He was a kid. I mean, he was an old man who created the Oasis. Oh, yeah, because he's the Steve Jobs deity. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course he, he's he a good guy. guy. I was hoping, in the beginning I thought, when they first showed him, oh, okay, he's definitely, it's going to be he put in a sentient thing into the machine and he's the bad guy, or he's still alive and he's the bad guy. Yeah. But, uh, we never found out if that happened or not, because this isn't the spoiler section. <laughs> I think uh, one of the shining things I'm getting right here is this movie Ooh. really wasn't for you. <laughs> yes. This is really not for you. All work and no play makes Rudy <laughs> land a dull boy. I'm surprised you uh, didn't enjoy it really at all because, um, you know, like I said, it, it's just, it's such a love letter to video games to me. Well, um, I, yeah. The mindset they, of it with, you know, the keys, the main plot of getting the three keys, that simplistic yeah. idea. Yeah. And, you know, the just, entire time, honestly, I was thinking, give me either dialogue wise or story wise, give me something original, give me something but it, new. But it's playing on those conventions yeah. of the cliches of the video games. I'm you know, getting tired of this love that. of retro, I think, as yeah, a whole. I mean, they're, they're, I didn't see pixels, I didn't see like. Yeah, I saw pixels. This what was another weird. like retro fest movie like that, like this? Retro Fest movie. Uh, maybe an older film called Fanboys. It was about uh, going to... Going to see episode the one episode or one or something. I yeah. never saw it, but... Um, I'm just... Something I'm probably missing. I'm but. sick of this celebration of retro. Oh, just it's a because huge celebration and the, the 80s. only reason is because yeah. people who were kids in the 80s are now in their 30s and they now have money yeah. to spend. Right. Scientifically speaking. Well, I statistically. Mean, I mean, do you have... Do you not like to listen to any 80s music? I dislike the score of this entire film. Hmm. Wow. Everything was way too t tongue-in-cheek. 
Tongue in cheek. Yeah, I mean, that's... That, I mean, I just... Like I Except said. for one... I think you know what point I, what point I like the score. We're going to wait, because right. I feel like that's a pretty big <laughs> yeah. spoiler. Yeah, it had uh, it had one section that was playing to you. It was it uh, really pandering was, to you. It was pandering specifically, specifically, to, you. specifically <laughs> to me. I fell into the trap, and it didn't pay off. Well, for you, it didn't pay off. <laughs> yeah. For you, you didn't enjoy it. Because um, I just wanted... they. You can't set up something that magnificent and not deliver something <laughs> more. Something fucking mag... <laughs> Something magnitudes of joy is what I was hoping for, and it didn't yeah. didn't give it to me. Um, so I mean, how did you feel about the CG? Because it was going for a very specific CG style. It was very cartoony CG. I didn't notice. It just reminded me yeah. of normal CG. Like oh, if really? the two, the girl and the guy, the video game characters, they reminded me just of their avatars they just yeah. were so generic it's like all right generic all right. cgi character well i mean the only thing that really bothered me with the cg at the beginning was the main character's hair it was like free flowing like constantly but and i was like what, what the fuck is going on with this yeah. and then the other girl the main character she does this thing to his hair and fixes that so i was like oh okay. when the main it was intentional when the girl shows up and uh, she's on the bike they're about to start the first contest for the first key nobody's ever beaten it We'll um, describe the plot momentarily. Yeah. She turns to him. Oh, it's, uh, what's her name? Uh, Artemis or something It's like Artemis. That? Yeah. She's blah, blah, blah. I watch her on Blank or Twitch. That. I watch her all Twitch the time. channel. Yeah. <laughs> Which I was like, oh, wow. <clears throat> Twitch still exists. In there. Their eyes lock briefly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gee, I wonder who the love interest is going to be. No, their eyes don't really lock. She has a helmet on. Well, there were, they had a moment. You can't deny there was a moment. Her chin. Her lips. That's what gave it away. Her lips, Did yeah. another movie where the main actor had his mouth open 99% of the time. Oh, God. I think he was physically incapable of closing his mouth. His fucking upper lip was huge. Yeah, you're really uh, getting down to the nit nitpicks here. I was looking for shit to fucking. I was you're just looking, looking for, for shit something. to hate. Because I was so fucking yeah. sick of it all, man. The lead uh, bad guy. Ben Mendelsohn. Ben Mendelsohn. Love I love him. Why can't he be a good guy in anything other than Wes Anderson movies? That's what I want to know. Wes Anderson movies. What well, Wes Anderson movie was he? He was in uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. He was uh, really? like the concierge who had hmm. the boy with Apple or whatever the pain Bill was Murray called. Was, uh, like the guy in the, the, had the keys in. He was connected somehow. He was in it. He was a good guy. I'll have to check that out later on. I haven't seen it in a while myself. I'm very. I love Grand Budapest Hotel. Very, uh, like what? Not every Wes Anderson movie I've seen. Very tragic in a way. But anyways, he um he had these fake teeth in, and the entire time you could tell because he was talking, and it was like. Well, they're like. It was like Mac from that episode of Sonny where they're trying to infiltrate the rebellion. Well, the, the funny thing about the teeth is that they're so overtly white that it kind of tells you about this character, how he's like so obsessive about the way he looks nah. and he's got the fucking whitening strips. But and, they were fake teeth, you know? just whiten this dude's teeth like crazy. Like yeah. he was talking. Okay. Whoa. I can't he's got like replicate a, kind of a lisp. He's. Yeah. Like he never opens his mouth. Speaking of characters who always he have would, their mouth open, he never opens his mouth. There was at mouth. least one or two Talks times where I thought that he had was adjusting his teeth. Like I could see some weird like mouth action going on. <laughs> he definitely had yeah. some fake teeth then. I don't oh, know yeah. about dentures. Yeah. I actually doubt it was dentures because I'm sure he already has a full set of teeth. Right. Well, if if, if he did have dentures, they would have had a scene in the movie where he had his so teeth you liked punched him? out. Yeah, I thought he was great in that. I it just him. was too much, too over the top for me. It's... I mean, this whole entire movie's fucking over nah. the top, dude. I mean, come on. I mean, they're going into this virtual reality world. I should have. There's all this you shit. Saw, I, right before... You saw the trailer. I didn't even watch the trailer. How did you not know what you were getting into? See, here's the thing about trailers. I'm watching them. I'm not retaining information yeah. most See, of the time. Do you notice whenever they come on, I'm like, oh, I've seen this one before. Right. I don't remember what's going on. I just remember, oh, that yeah. one specific picture frame yeah um i did a good job i mean you wrote you you yeah, overall I, like the whole i like over him. the top cheesy sort of yeah. schlocky thing that was I, going on it was on definitely here. schlocky for sure yeah. and i think that's what the book is i, I yeah. actually like to listen to the audiobook of of it 
um, to see what was different because the um, the guy who wrote the book actually wrote the screenplay with uh, another guy, so it probably is pretty true to the book. Um, yeah. So um, you know, I mean, if you hate it, you know, I mean, you, you know, you hate what the guy fucking made. I mean, you just it just didn't fucking work for you. Yeah. Um, which is fine. You know, not everything's gonna work for everybody, and you know, a lot of references in movies sometimes it does feel pandering it doesn't work but that's what this movie was i knew that going in this was it would have felt before right before the movie started i asked all right so what am i getting into here and you know what my fine associate (laughs) silky johnson says what what are you serious you want to know what what's going to be what this is about uh don't you want to go in blind (laughs) well you at a certain point you should know what the movie is like, when you're 20 minutes into this movie, you shouldn't be like, oh, man, there's really too many references. I mean, you should know this movie's just going to shit references. No, <laughs> I, was, I knew that it was going to be that, but it's just every, every, every time it was like a pebble hitting a fucking, a giant, a giant rock formation. <laughs> just a little piece chips away, and so towards the end, If I had slowly... told you that it was just reference filled at the beginning, do you think that would have made it better for you, the experience? Yeah. Because I wouldn't have been like, Ugh, every couple fucking seconds it felt like. Wow. Hmm. But anyways, whatever. Um, we'll get into, we'll describe the plot briefly before we give our pre-spoiler recommendation. Yeah, just go into the spoiler section. The, um, it's 2040, and for some reason all these people know pop culture stuff from yeah. 80s. Yeah, there's... Early 90s and 70s, but alas... In this digital matrix-like world, there's a computer dominion run by a dead man, a god of sorts. He, um, is dead, so he can't really do anything. (laughs) Um, I don't really know where I'm going with this. This one kid (laughs) who lives in this, he escapes real world by going into this digital realm. Like everybody else in the world. And Johnny Mnemonic, let's not forget. That probably is a reference to uh, Giant Mnemonic. A lot of Matrix references. There were so many goddamn references. Yeah, there was actually a a video game reference I was really shocked at. Um, uh, Which one? One of the main villains, uh, the guy who has the skull chest, who's voiced by T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller. Who's really funny in this movie. I liked him. Eh, Uh, sorry. um, He He uh, was the best part for me. He has this giant uh, gun which has a skull at the end, and it's a gun from a video game called Shadows of the Damned. Which was made by Suda51 and uh, one of the guys who did Resident Evil 4. Mm. And that's such a fucking deep cut, like, reference, because I came down, so... Well, one of the guns that they were using, I noticed, because I've played video games a time or two in my day. One of the guns was, um... The Halo assault rifle from the first (laughs) one that you get. There's a lot of Halo on this. They paid good money to Microsoft. There was a ton of Halo Halo stuff. A ton of... There was, um... A lot of Overwatch. Overwatch stuff, too. Which is a recent game. Um, so... In this digital realm, you, um, get coins. And if you die, there's no one-ups, there's no guys. You get all these coins, you use it to buy digital stuff. Armor, cars... It's kind of roguelike-ish, you know? Yeah, exactly. Collect stuff, you die, you lose it. And you lose all your coins, too. And you have to start over. Yeah. Um, the guy who died created this quest. There are three keys. It's a lot like, uh, the Atari game... Kingdom Quest or whatever, which they reference in this game, movie, pardon me, (laughs) and um, whoever finds all the keys, solves all the mazes, you know, national treasures, all the clues, they own the Oasis, the digital world. They're in charge of it. And of course, there is a, somehow it's either like a government agency that's what it felt like for most movie but it's just a corporation who's trying to get they're it an so evil that corporation. Yeah. they're just the they're just the maniacal evil corporation well, for second, like nazis like overseeing yeah, everything but are they the government or what there's like cops who show yeah, up at are, the end and i laugh like laughably there's, um, man there's a giant billboard that says join now the uh almost I saw like robo cops yeah, was was kind of, or starship troopers kind of like that that's, you know, that uh, great kind of commercial or join us now there know, was one other stuff. there was one other sort kind of, of satirical fun. spot um in the beginning when they first market whatever the suit was he was wearing um oh, yeah, i wish there was some more everything. of that some more of like more of the paul verhoeven satirical sort of stuff. sort yeah. of like 
take a step back and look at this fucking, you know, this sort of, what'd you call it? Saturday morning cartoon. This sort of ode to nostalgia. Take a step back. It's total nostalgia pandering. I wish there was more moments like that where they're like, all right. Yeah. Understand what we're doing here. Take a step back. Realize. That. I mean, it's it, to me, it's got like everything. It's I mean, it, for every kind of fan you are, it's got a little piece for you. Yeah. Um, because I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that kids aren't gonna get at all. Like, I mean, the, yeah, you know. But that's but, the uh, thing. The whole plot felt like one a, of these it's novel an old movies. video game plot. You know, just collect yeah. the things and to, you know. You know, collect the. It's a fetch quest. The you way know, it was, the way it was presented to me, it felt just like the Hunger Games. You know what I mean? Just like I it's. Hard, I'm having a hard way of describing how I'm feeling about it, but it's like no. just pulp, more pulp shit that I've seen before, and I, I don't feel like seeing it again. It wasn't funny for <clears> me, <throat> really. So we'll. Uh, so your recommendation. <laughs> I recommend that um, you burn down every theater that's showing this film. <laughs> yeah. Hunt down. And, um, you know. No, that's probably the only reference this movie didn't have. Hug Steven references. Spielberg. Hug Steven Spielberg. I was going to say crucify, but, you know, for legal. <laughs> legal He's Jewish. Sake. You want to crucify him? Hey, man, they got to find their Messiah <laughs> one way or another. Um. Yeah, so uh, if... Um, if you know, if you like, you know, video games, if you have a soft spot for older video games and, you know, the 80s. Just references to them, <laughs> though. Not really like anything. I don't know. I, just, I, I think there's some cool stuff with the, the Oasis creator, but, you know, we'll get to that later. Um, I, I would recommend it. I think it's a fun watch. Um, you know, I think it's an enjoyable movie, you know, but you got to know what you're going to do beforehand. You know, watch a trailer. I don't think a trailer is really going to spoil this movie. Uh, there's so much going on, uh, but make sure you're okay with the CG. Are you kidding me, dude? A fucking uh, a goddamn Arthurian legend is gonna ruin this thing. <laughs> Arthurian legend. Yeah, so I'd I'd give it a uh, I'd give it a recommendation if you're into those things, those specific things. Very see another thing. Very heavy. A lot of movies nowadays are very heavy on nerd culture. Nerd culture only includes video games, Alien, and. <laughs> Stanley Kubrick, I guess. <laughs> Stanley Kubrick. Which I'm... That was a very niche pandering. <laughs> yes. So, spoiler section <laughs> begins spoiler with section that. Began. Go on your rant on Kubrick now. <laughs> I'll just sit here. <laughs> the second key, the second clue is no inside... references. <laughs> it's inside The Shining. It's inside the Overlook Hotel. And as soon as... They got the real theme. As soon as the real theme starts, I'm like, oh, God, I hope it gets to that chorus where the lady's like, eee, and right. shit. That would be so dope. It didn't, but I was Every fine with the score. In this section, you had your hands in a prayer. You were shaking your hands in prayer. Well, first, let's go over it. Let's go over it step by step, frame by frame here. What happens? First, they get in there. Well, his friend goes to room 237. After the river of blood off. washes yeah, him. Okay, the first they meet yeah. the girls. All right. Yes. I was hoping that. Well, you were sighing. You, you were just miserable. I didn't want it to be the sequence. girls. I wanted to be one of something cool. That's like... the iconic thing from Shining yeah. that everybody knows. I'm just that too big a kid on the little fan. tricycle, fucking going down the hallway. They should have got Jack. They should have paid for Jack Nick the rights to Jack Nicholson's likeness. Oh, face, yeah, no. They, would they just showed like his lower hat. They showed like his uh, torso and his well, legs. They didn't get I'm the like, rights to uh, the, the actress who plays his wife either. Well, she didn't really have... She was never a adversary. You know, the whole point of that scene was they were the enemies. They did... Sh- I was... I was praying that they showed the old naked lady. They no, did. They, do. <laughs> they start I making out... I was shocked at how much of that was in this movie. I was like, wow. It really went Steven that. Spielberg, man. He's got it in with the MPAA, apparently. Well, he, that, that, a lot of shit... Is this PG this or PG-13? PG-13. There's a lot of shits. This, There's a couple there's bird one fuck, flips. Which is a great fuck. I love that. Who scene. said it? Uh, <laughs> one of the like kids. He goes, it's fucking Chucky. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that. I love that so much. And you hated it. You were just miserable ruining it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like laughing. Yay. Back, Chucky. Back to, back to the shining. Back to, your back shining. to a, 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 a real horror <laughs> film. Yeah, fuck you. Child's say. Plague one's great. <laughs> the, um... <laughs> The old lady turns into a axe wielding zombie mm. into the maze. <laughs> um, I wish they showed Jack. 
I wish that when they went into the bar, they had to talk to the bartender. I, I agree with you. When they go in, I was like, oh, show the bartender. Show the bartender. They don't do go. that. Uh, so I will agree with you there. Um, um, but, I mean, it makes sense that. Do you th think that the that girl who played the robot avatar, giant robot man avatar, looked a little bit like um, the lady from Ghostbusters? Uh, Maybe a lighter skinned, a younger lot version. Thinner version. I yeah, mean, she, that's I it. think she might be like a WNBA player or something. I, I could see that. They tr but, see. Here's the thing in movies: they try really hard now. For some reason, like if you're a lesbian in real life, you have to be a lesbian in the, in the movie. movie? Right. Like that one girl who um. Yeah, that that was a little. Who's in this? This one actress. She's the lesbian in everything she's in. Alan um, Page. <laughs> not next man. Um. She was in, uh, I'm a cheerleader, wait, but wait, I'm a cheerleader in uh, American Horror Story, the Asylum season. She was the Sarah girlfriend, Paulson? the girlfriend of Sarah Paulson. She looks kind of parlant, f forgive the parlance of our time, she looks kind of dykish. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, but anyways, whatever. never mind. <laughs> I love that they use the real score. Um, I mean, it makes sense that there's this section devoted to Kubrick because Steven Spielberg loved Kubrick. He made yeah. AI, which is what Kubrick wanted to be his, like, Well, didn't film. Kubrick, like, start AI or something? Yeah, he, okay. well, I mean, he died when he was finishing Eyes Wide Shut, but... Did he, so he just, like, wrote the screenplay for AI or something? It was, I mean, it was one of those projects that he had, like, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of notes. I okay. Mean, he, he was trying to, I mean, he, he, he spent, like, I don't know, it was, like, ten years trying to make Napoleon too um that was one of his like huge projects that he never got to make um so i mean well if it's anything like spartacus i'm glad he didn't make it wow really you don't like Spartacus? very boring mm, okay. i watched it once it was it was tough for me to get well, through whatever. honestly oh, all right but do um continue yeah i mean I, I liked the kubrick sequence which is the second sequence in this uh of the keys and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's total pandering, you know, you, like I said, you see the twins, you see the blood going on to there. Um, but I did like when they go into the snow maze, that was enjoyable. And, you know, just giant axes are flying all around. I thought that was, I thought it was just fun. You know? Yeah. It's just, um, it's, it's the video game version of The Shining. <laughs> you know? Yeah. The um... I didn't like the conclusion of it, but it had to tie yeah. into the gay fucking, this stupid fucking uh, Steve Jobs guy, whatever his name was, Harper, Harden. Right. Halsey. What was his name? I Something like that. I remember his name. Never mind. No matter. Uh, what else were we just talking about? The Shining part? We were talking part. about the Shining sequence. So it goes from a sort of race is how you win the first key, but you have to go backwards. Yeah, which I liked. That. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it was all right. But one, uh, another nitpick from the cynical asshole. <laughs> he talks about how he's watched it thousands of times. The Butler. I knew the Butler was going to be Simon Pegg too. Really? Wow! I did you not could. I could tell his voice. I could tell it was his voice. Hmm. I did not catch that at all. But I did think Simon Pegg was dead for a while, so I thought it'd be like Superman's father. And um... I, I liked Simon Pegg in this and the Steve Jobs scenes. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of parallels to Steve Jobs. But uh, he says he's watched a thousand times, but he didn't notice the part where he looks directly he's... at the camera and says, um, what does he say? Well, he's not. Go back. You have to go back super fast at a high rate of speed. Yeah, it's a back to the future. There, it really felt like, to me, it, it was going to be like um, National Treasure or something. And I got worried, but it slowly got out of that trapping. So. Oh, I like the first National Treasure, the second was shit. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a okay popcorn, good popcorn movie, you know? It's yeah, easy it's just to sit down and watch. Yeah, it's movie. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I liked the actor who played the kind of the Steve Jobs I mean, I, I pretty much liked all the actors. Um, None of the actors did. They didn't really piss me off or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I really liked the, the lead girl. Um, she was nice. Okay. I've never seen her in anything. Yeah, I just saw her in a movie called Thoroughbreds. She's, uh, I, I like her. She's, She's opposite awesome. the witch. Yeah, and it's Taylor Joy. Um, She's yeah, pretty good, her. too, in a Taylor Joy. Yeah, I liked the main actor. He was in a really good movie called Mud. 
which was with McConaughey. Um, I saw that a while ago. Yeah. It reminded me, the ending reminded me too much of his previous film, uh, Take Shelter. Oh, man. Sort of the, um, well, all right, I everything's not good. Huh? Really? No, the ending. The ending where it's like, all right, everything bad that we were trying the whole the time to stop happening is happening, but we're here and we're going to make it together. That was the sort the sort of same I, themes. I don't know. I, I kind of felt like Mud was this like modern day kind of Tom Sawyer kind of movie. Yeah. Of Matt McConaughey is like Tom Sawyer on this island and all that. And I could see that. I, I I really liked Mud a lot. I mean, I hated the CG blood that they had with the final I liked. Shootout. I didn't mind Mud, but I definitely liked Take Shelter better. Yeah, we had, we had like exact opposite reactions. Yeah. He's a hit or miss director. Um, I think he's talented, though. What else has he done? He did Midnight Special, which is a movie I've talked before about on here. And he also did another movie with Michael Shannon called Shotgun Stories, which was um, which was an interesting, super low-budget movie. Would you say it's worth a, worth a watch? Oh, well, you've already watched two of his movies. Why don't watch his whole filmography? Filmography, <laughs> he says. Anything else from this movie, sort of spoilerized, that you want to get into? Um... Because, um, I mean, I've stayed in... I, I mean, listen, I think... Uh, I do think the movie is kind of too long. There's, I, they could have cut did, out a it lot. It did drag a little bit. The ending, for sure. I mean, there's, like, this huge climax battle in the VR. Where there's, like, you know, That's Iron Giant... That's another thing. Everything ends Mac with... Godz well, that everything happen. ends with on. a giant battle, man. Dude, the movie goes on for, like, another fucking 25 minutes after that. Yeah. And that's where I thought the movie was going to end, but it doesn't. It just keeps going. Um, I would have been perfectly content with them to just end it at the giant battle, and he beats yeah. the thing. No, that was... The quarter yeah. thing I got annoyed by, too. Really? Like, wow, I liked that. It just that. didn't do it for me. I liked... I, I didn't see that it was going to be the extra life, and I was like, oh, you well, know what? Well, it's like you get a digital quarter, you're just going to look at one side... I don't know. It's just one of those things where I was already pissed off and at extra. Well, like I said, the, the love edge. letter. I mean, it's kind of like going back to the arcades. You know, it's it's kind of a nod to that bygone era of you know the arcades. And I, there's I mean, something important I want to mention though. There was last time during Tomb Raider, I forgot to mention an intro song. <laughs> I'm not going to mention it here because I've forgotten it already. <laughs> the intro song. Do you remember the intro song to this one? Yes, it's. Uh, Panama or jump from jump. Yeah. I, as soon as I heard, Which it, I was I like, cringed. I, was I like, did as well. Fuck, I hate this. Song. As soon as he says jump, he jumps from his window. I get up. Oh no no no! As soon as he says I get up, jumps out his window onto the balcony, and nothing gets me down. Right? That's the lyric. Yeah. It was so literal. I was so pissed off because he then climbs down. Yeah. <laughs> There's that fucking lady strap uh, in the VR. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just another one of those things where it's just like a lot of cringy moments for me in this one. There's definitely some cringy moments. Like I say, it's 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 definitely too long. Um, it's you know it's two hours and twenty minutes. Um, what tom would you have cut? What would you? That's have the thing is that nothing really sticks into my mind where I was like, wow, these sequences you could have cut out and it wouldn't have affected the plot. There's nothing from this movie that I really. Maybe some scenes where he's talking to the to the girl who's his best friend. I mean, you don't know she's a girl. That's kind yeah. of one of the. But it's when they show it's like, him. oh, okay. I don't really care. Doesn't really have yeah. any bearing on the story. It was an avatar. Yeah. So that that you know maybe he could have caught a couple scenes. I did like that little Asian kid. <laughs> yeah, when he first when he first comes on screen, for some reason I see a cute little You're Asian dying. kid. I you start laughing. Dying. I don't know why. And uh, he's just like this 11-year-old kid. And he's like one of the most badasses in this kind of oasis. He's like yeah. one of the best people. We don't clan up. <laughs> All the gamer talk had me had me too. Yeah, which it wasn't. Um, I'm surprised. I think there was probably a lot of people helping Steven Spielberg to make sure that this like this. Well, obviously the the guy who wrote it, he yeah. knows what he's talking about. He's a huge gamer, but. Um, you know, so I don't think there's anything in this movie particularly that's going to piss off, you know, a lot of gamers. Just yeah. Like, just if you really sick of getting pandered to, I guess. But that's the point of the film. But that's the, the whole film. movie. Yeah. It's literally, we are going to pander to you. That's the whole point of the movie. During, during our screening, <laughs> a man is punched in the balls. Yeah, well, and children 
They were clapping. And somebody clapped behind us. They were clapping. Many people saying, clapped. Yay. Yay. There were many times that <laughs> clapping occurred. Yeah, which was And that made me laugh. Me. Just because I, somebody yeah, was even... laugh, clapping or laughing at something that I was like, yeah, what is funny about this? Or why are you clapping? It made yeah, me laugh. I felt out of place. I mean, they really had fun. They really enjoyed the movie. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's flawed for sure. You know, the, the, I'm not going to sit here and be like, this movie is not flawed. It's got problems, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, I enjoyed it. All right. Um, we'll do uh, final rankings and then we'll get into some, I'll think of some sort of suggestion. All right. Um, I'd go with a six out of a ten for it. I had fun with it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I knew what I was getting into. But you're unlikely to watch it again. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm ever gonna watch it again. Uh, but um, I think it's a solid watch. Yeah. If if you're in that minority, <laughs> you know, uh, who you know, you know, if dead inside. <laughs> dead inside. Yeah. Uh, if you if you love you know games and kind of game culture and. Uh, if you love the 80s, um, you know, kind of uh, the power glove. <laughs> Did the power glove make an appearance? Is that when I mean, it turned into a Gundam? I mean, just the imagery of him putting on his suit and the gloves and everything. And the Gundam I'm surprised you didn't uh, talk about the guy from Hurricane Heists. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about <laughs> gets, that. His whole building gets blown up. He gets killed by a trailer yet again. <laughs> Yeah. I laughed when he was on screen. Did you notice when he first appeared? Yeah, he's got this fucking rat tail mullet. <laughs> the same voice he talked. He's the guy from The Witch, I'm pretty sure. The yes, father. he is the father and the witch. Yes, okay. you are correct. Good, good. Yes, he's the father and the witch, and he's one of the main bad guys in Hurricane Heist, and he's in this movie. I was like, what the fuck? The dude from Hurricane Heist. <laughs> Gets killed by a trailer. Yet yeah, again. He's a, yeah, and his fucking poor aunt dies. Who She was a, just a nice person who was in a domestic abuse situation. <laughs> she was also in the movie for two minutes, so it didn't really, yeah. it didn't really hit home. I don't know, you're not like, oh my god, but it's just like, yeah. 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 For me, for me, how many times have I for made this joke? For the cynical asshole. <laughs> yeah. For the, that's another time, like, it really helps. Some movies, it really helps me at least knowing what it is going in dr strange love it's supposed to be a dark comedy it's not supposed to be a serious movie like um yeah can oh. you think of any other examples like that where like movies where it really helps where you know what you're getting into 2001 a space odyssey that's the ah. perfect movie to really not know the plot but sort of know it's gonna be slow everything you're seeing oh, is important yeah. just relax and go for a ride i mean i definitely think that telling people whether or not a movie is slow is, is an important thing. Like, that really helps you. Because it, like, it's like, you know, what we were talking about before with, like, Red Sparrow. Like, if people thought that was an action movie, you would be fucking pissed going yeah. into that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that, that's a that's a big thing. And and marketing plays. Like, like, I had a problem with The Witch because I thought I was getting a fucking horror movie. A straight-up fucking horror movie. And I love The Witch. I got an old really period like piece Witch. fucking movie. You know, and I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? I'm watching nah. a family drama in old fucking times. But think about it. Drawing back to The Shining, what was The Shining? It's a family drama. Man, yeah, but that movie is really fucked up. It's, it's a horror movie. I mean, it, there's a lot of really creepy imagery. He's going insane. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a family drama for sure. But, um... I mean, I, there's a, there's a lot of, I mean, Cronenberg fucking hates that movie. He thinks it's a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah, he says it's the worst, fu he thinks it's one of the worst horror movies ever made. He says it's, that Kubrick didn't understand horror on any fundamental level. Which I, I was shocked. He really fucking hates that movie. How do you Cronenberg. feel about The Shining? Um, I, it's, I think it's still on Netflix. I don't know if they removed it. I wanted to rewatch it. I haven't seen it in fucking years. I've never seen it in HD. I saw it on in VHS. HD. I've seen it on that's, VHS. That's and the DVD. principle of Stanley Kubrick's work. Is HD is probably oh, made absolutely. it a thousand times better my because first, there's so much work put into just the shots. My first know? time seeing 2001 was in HD, and that I was like, "Holy fuck!" This, this was made in 1968. Oh yeah, it's just like, whoa! This looks so fucking amazing, and they're just the 4K is kind of be coming out of it new scan of the original negative which i'm sure is badass mind-blowingly good um but uh yeah uh six out of ten for ready player one i, I enjoyed it you know it was i um 
I was incredibly bored. I could see everything that was going to happen the whole time. Yeah, you were and really miserable, just sighing nonstop. I was like, oh my I'm God. sorry. I, I became a prick. I became yeah. an asshole audience member. I, I'm I, sorry. I wished I was like, I was like, oh man, this was not the movie to take Rudy to. I'm also pretty <laughs> tired. <laughs> it just doesn't help, but. So it was just nonstop bombarding your face with shit. Just reference, a lot reference, screen. reference. Yeah. And, bright colors and stuff. So you, you Aside from the one racing scene, nothing really blows me away. You like the Chucky? <laughs> Too random. Too random. Too random? Him. It's a reference. They had the fucking alien rip this guy open and then you see Chucky with a fucking knife yeah. towards the end. I was like, oh, this is great. Oh, this is fun. We'll go five high production values, but it's oh, ultimately so for me forgettable. I hate it so much. Well, it's, it's like... I can't rate it any lower because if I would have given the Avengers, if we would have done like a movie like that, I would have yeah. given it a five because, yeah, they put a lot of effort into it. You thought the I didn't first like Avengers it. Avengers was a five. Yeah. Wow. I thought it was going to be dope. I'm like, oh yeah, this thing made one point whatever six billion, billion, six billion dollars. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fucking awesome. I enjoyed the first Avengers a lot. I hated the second one. It's, it's the it like sucks. I was bringing up earlier. It's just everything's trying so hard to be epic. You forget what makes uh, things epic. How much epic. long after did you see the movie before it came out? What, The Avengers? Yeah. Did you see it, like, when it came out or no? No. Years later? No. Like, um, maybe a month or two after uh, it came okay. out on DVD. Hmm. Yeah. Because I was like, maybe you saw the whole blue laser in the sky. Or I, that was at around. the start of the getting sick of superhero movies, too. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll never do one. Maybe, well, I don't know, if, if you don't want to see Deadpool 2, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'll definitely see Deadpool 2, um... The first one, it's the same case as the Avengers. I got super excited for it. It's going to be different. It's going to be super funny. Yeah, so and did I. And I was, you know... Just standard Marvel action movie with some F-words in it for me. Yeah, I liked the humor in that, but, you know, the action part sucked for me. I liked some of the humor. I don't. I liked the jokes, if there were jokes. <laughs> the, the, the scenes fucking... With, like, Ryan Reynolds, Why is like, TJ masturbating Miller. his little baby hand. <laughs> Why is T.J. Miller in everything? No, he's not going to be in everything. No, he's got a huge, like, sex scandal on him. E. Yeah, he's, he's going to be he's gonna be up there with Franco and Dustin Hoffman and everybody else. <laughs> he's now Mr. Untouchable, at least for a year. Yeah. How about uh, recommendations? We'll go... We'll go two of your favorite horror films. Two of my favorite horror films? Uh, well, oh God, I hate to go generic. Um, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do my most recent, like, loved horror movie, and then I'll do my favorite. Uh, you have just whatever you're thinking about now. Okay. Two, whatever um, your two favorite the, horror movies right now are. Yeah, the, the first movie I'm going to uh, bring up really, really just impacted me recently, which was uh, The Black Coat's Daughter. I still haven't uh, seen it. I really fucking loved it, man. Like, it's... It's currently on Netflix as well, I believe. N- no, it's on Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. His uh, the other movie he directed is on Netflix. It's a horror movie called. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but oh, shit, fuck, I can't remember. Name the director. So his name's Oz Perkins. He's uh, Anthony Perkins' son. The, oh, um, seriously? Yeah, the guy from Psycho who plays yeah, the killer. Yeah, yeah, I know it. He was also in the trial. Yeah. Um, he. Uh, yeah, Very his, boring movie. I, I think his son is just so fucking phenomenally talented. Um, the movie just harkens back to just pure suspense and dread. It's gorgeously shot. Uh, James Remar, who uh, played... Uh, um, he was in 48 Hours. He played... All um, Walter Hill's movies. Uh, he was in... Dexter's uh, Dad. He was in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. He played God. Raiden. People are really getting home for that one. <laughs> no, it's just one of the ra- yeah. it's just one of those actors he's I'll a, always remember him he's in a that movie. Phenomenal character actor. Yeah, he's a great actor. I like I love his, his voice. His performance is so fucking unbelievable in the movie. It, it just made me fall in love with him as an actor all over again. It was just like he's, he's gonna marry him. <laughs> yeah, I love James Remar. I've loved him. I loved him in just like everything he's in. He's just so great. Uh, he's I think he, he was in Django too. He played two parts in Django. He gets killed at the very beginning, and then he's at Candyland and, and oh, right. at the end. I don't yeah. remember him. Yeah, he. Uh, he can, must have had Tarantino's a beard a huge, on or something. Uh, what? Do you have a beard on or something? He he had a beard in the beginning, and then he has just a mu- like a wax mustache. Yeah, dandy's and a, and mustache. And a boiler kind of uh, top hat. Um, but yeah, he's in it. 
uh, Emma Roberts, who I'm very hitting this on, but she's great in that. Uh, it's it's just about these girls in the school, and um, it's it's just it's so fucking unbelievable. I loved it. You know, I hate to hype it up so much, but it no, it's... it really blew me away. I just every minute I'm like, wow, this is fucking great, and it's just gotten like totally ignored by critics. And uh, when did it come out again? Last year. Yeah, it came out last year, and I guess it had been on the shelf for maybe a couple of years, mm. too. Um, just waiting well, to be released. Because, like you said, it's like a throwback to oh, yeah, class they, horror. It's unlike anything that's no, out. Nobody's going to want to no buy it. No horror producers were going to put this into theaters because it's, it's a movie that it's just building suspense. There's no jump scares in it. Yeah. And they're just like, what the fuck do we do with this? So it ends up getting dumped on uh, Amazon Prime, but huge recommendation for me that'd be my first one kind of something current what was a horror movie earlier that you said you didn't like that much but i said was cool or i asked you if you like get out not get out not earlier in our podcasting but earlier in um this evening a fog nah let's say uh first <laughs> one will go the shining because i brought it up so much right. it's you know classic psychological horror movie there's no there's some jump scares, I guess you could say, at the end, but that's more just because, you but know, it's, the loud it's music. it's classic love jump scares. It's not It's fire building to something and then releasing it. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, go in, get ready for a slow burn and understand long, that, um, mm -hmm. it's only about two hours. It's not really? that long. Wow. I think it's only about two, maybe two and really a half long. at most. Yeah, I thought it was at least I could be half. mistaken. I don't know. I might be wrong. Jack Nicholson is mesmerizing electrifying goddamn explosion of tnt in this one totally just absorbs into the role like daniel day commits. lewis style man he uh, starts out here and he ends up way fucking over there man there's so many layers to his performance just going completely fucking manic and subdued and just the slow mental deterioration and stuff yeah amazing performance i mean you can't deny that and of course the the guarantee of great work behind the camera, Stanley Kubrick. Did I mean, you know that the has, shot, fucking amazing. I'm gonna give you guys Can't a pro tip. It. The hedge maze was only about six feet tall. They just use like a fisheye lens or some Source random lens. Kind of thing. Uh, I can't remember. It was on the Blu-ray. I watched <laughs> it. Um, it was only six feet tall. If they shifted the camera in any direction, up, down, yeah. left, right, whatever, yeah. it would totally skew it, and you'd be able to tell they were well, only like five feet tall. Kubrick was just obsessive of everything being centered, every shot being like perfectly Symmetrical. measured. Yeah, yeah, everything measured. And Wes Anderson does the same exact thing. He's like a Kubrick, another... Perfectionist, freak, freak I guess you could Kubrick. say. Yeah. Um, great classic movie. Stephen King hates it, yeah. but that's only because it differs so greatly from his... Um, and David Cronenberg. <laughs> and David Cronenberg. Because <laughs> David master. Cronenberg, I guess, is a spiteful prick. The worst horror movie ever? Like, you've never seen anything worse than The Shining? He, he thinks it's completely misogynist, too, which is another thing that Stephen King said. Which um, I don't get that. I don't really get that. It I mean, maybe, me. because... It all uh, relies on Jack. As soon as Jack goes crazy, yeah, but, but then does again, that make Wendy... a misogynist movie just because it focuses on a man? Like, nah, that's, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, that's that's I always mean, an if, argument I hear. The I'm thing like, is, I could see it maybe when you're arguing about the subtext of it, but you could argue the subtext means this, but it also means that. You could argue it any which way with a Kubrick movie, especially The Shining. Watch Room uh, the. Documentary, documentary to room 237, 237 yeah. to understand just how crazy at least some people are Fan theories, when yeah. interpreting a movie yeah I, I have actually I've seen the trailer and I listened to a podcast where those the people who made it uh, the guy the documentarian there's so obsessed with it. there's it one or cool. two theories good. that seem like tangible the rest seem like I off the wall say. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah fascinating movie though I mean I think just well so many there's the thing with Kubrick is, you know, there's so many stories of maybe him shooting the moon landing, hired by the president, yeah. and all this shit, you know, because of 2001. They were like, oh, let's have him shoot the moon landing. And there's so many fucking conspiracy theorists uh, about uh, 
just Kubrick in general. I just really think he's a great filmmaker. That's my main concern. There's no doubting that he was a great filmmaker. No doubting at no all. No doubting. <laughs> Gets me my tea and my cucumber sandwich. Was the kid uh, from Player One down? Ready Player One. <laughs> I do not want to get this movie's name right. No. Was he? Is he an American lad? Yeah. yeah okay. I think so. Yeah. I've enjoyed him in pretty much most of the things I've seen him. In. Next recommendation. What's your? Uh, uh, I'm just gonna go with the cliche one. Everyone said it, but I'm gonna go with the thing. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing is just fucking incredible. Another slow it. burn movie. Strap just... in and get ready. It, it transcends horror. My dad, he, he does not like horror films. And first time I saw it, I saw it with my dad because you know, he loves Kurt Russell. It's more than horror, though. It's like it um, it's science fiction horror, Absolutely. but it's both of those things to the 10th yeah, degree. There's even, even an action component. To it as yeah, well. absolutely. Um, Kurt Russell. It's just Kurt Russell and Keith David together are so unbelievable. Why didn't Keith David oh. become like a huge star and was Evan everything? He's fucking awesome, man. Yeah, I, I mean, he's had a great career. Yeah. Um, he's had a huge voice acting career as well. Yeah. Um, so he's done well for himself. I love Keith David. Always have. Um, he's he's kind of beloved in the cult film community, obviously, and people who love Carpenter. He's like popped us. up in a lot of uh, great cult films, apparently. He, he made a great fucking cameo in The Nice Guys with Shane Black. I forgot. Oh, I he was remember. fucking great in that movie. Um, but yeah, The Thing, um, unbelievable cinematography by Dean Cundey, who shot Halloween and all of... A great um, score. Unbelievable score by Ennio Morricone, famous uh, for all of the spaghetti western scores and uh, perhaps the best practical effects of oh any movie of all time oh, fuck the mid the early to mid oh. to late 80s are the pinnacle of practical effects yeah it's just the the practical effects in that movie are just mind blowing it's and there's anytime i hear somebody say oh you know, some of them don't hold up i'm like fuck you what are you talking about yeah. this shit is amazing you know it's it's so good it's an alien who's possessed this yeah. guy's head and sprouted legs from it and oh, now it's yeah. walking out of the room while it's on fire it's, it's fucking horrifying and i saw it for the first time i saw it during the middle the of the test, day bro the test scene um, i love that scene oh, so much unbelievable suspense with the blood and just heating things up the thing is definitely one of my favorites oh, too there's so much suspense so much tension it's it's fucking perfect i mean not only to me is it the my favorite horror movie and I think the best horror movie ever made. I think it's one of the best movies ever it made. It has one of my favorite endings. It sums up oh, everything so perfectly. It's an ending that people debate to this day. It's an ambiguous ending and people debate which, you know, we'll you know, do we won't a go future. It, we're going to do a future the thing podcast from the yeah, sounds of I, it. I feel like that'd be a pretty good idea. It's such an unbelievable movie. Just talking about it makes me want to rewatch it. And, um, the way you said that, I thought you were going to say Rwanda. <laughs> Rwanda. Yeah, but, um, incredible. Every, everything's been, <laughs> every, everything's been said about the thing. It's just, and it totally bombed when it fucking came out too. And it was hated by critics. Yeah. It, it was the same year that well, E.T. came out yeah. to tie into Spielberg. There was another couple movies I can't think of right now, but they got hurt by E.T. too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, my God, if you haven't seen the thing. Do yourself the fucking pleasure and watch it. Unbelievable. My next horror film is an unconventional one. Oh, God. <laughs> Hotel Rwanda. Hotel Rwanda. If you, don't think, joint. if you don't think genocide is oh, horrific, yeah, my is. friend, you need to be deposited into the nearest psychological center for treatment. Yeah. Um, you know, a typical sad movie where, you great, know, going in, it's going to be sad. Gino. Yeah, I love Don Cheadle. He's another one. He should have been in more movies, he leading in more movies. He, he just gave up now. He looks fucking awful. He looks, he looks like old. a seventy-year-old man. Yeah, and he, he just took the kid oh, yeah. The uh, kid you know? in uh, Ready Play Go, Ready Player One. He looked like he was a forty-year-old man. For some reason, Ain't it? yeah, I don't know why, but his face, his facial features. I just thought, why does this dude look like he's forty? Well, he's getting older now. I mean, he doesn't look like he did when he was at Mud. Who know? directed... Um, yeah, because he was a fucking young kid, right? They were like 12, 15, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think he's like maybe 20 now. Yeah, definitely. What uh, What can you remember about Hotel Rwanda? I've I seen just it quite a few times. I um, saw it in school at least twice. It. Yep, they forced me to watch it in school. But I saw it... Um, I, remember, I remember really liking it. I remember 
it being like a very sad, emotional movie. Hutu uh, Power. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it in a long time. It's one of those movies I haven't wanted to revisit it because it's depressing. Yeah. But uh, also because anytime they show a movie in school, I'm just like, oh, what the fuck? You know, it's like who dances with wolves. I've seen it's Dr. Zhivago like, since seeing it in 10th grade social studies. God, they used to show dances with wolves so many Never seen times. it. Really? I, um... Do you hate I don't, Kevin Costner? Are you I, another fucking hater of Kevin Costner? No, I don't hate Kevin Costner, Jesus. but I don't like... I don't know. I like him in specific roles. You know, sort of... You don't like Not westerns, serious. Yeah. I like westerns. I took Heaven's Gate. I fucking love Heaven's Gate, man. I still gotta rewatch that. That's one of the most... The that's time. probably a pretty... One of the most tedious westerns, probably. I mean, oh. the thing about westerns is... I don't know. There's a lot of ones where people say they're great. I've seen them. I'm like, oh, all right, it's okay. I liked uh, True Grit when it came out. I really liked that. The remake? That. The remake, yeah. yeah. I loved uh, Jeff Bridges in it. Yeah, Jeff Bridges is uh, Jeff Bridges is great. So, uh, are you really going with Hotel Rwanda? <laughs> yeah. I can't think of whatever. It was earlier in the podcast tonight, but I'll... um copy and paste whatever it was right now bing uh anything else any uh any other news any other news um you're finally transitioning yeah i'm finally getting my dick chopped off sent to china yeah i'll believe it until someone shows me evidence otherwise (laughs) watch rudy lands you know my first think about things video whatever it was called yeah There'll be a link at the end. Um, well, Charlie Chaplin, go eat a dick. <laughs>